Welcome back to our third segment of Ultra Life Today with Logan Duvall, author of Father's Heart, which you can find on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Uh, I'm Josh Bell. You're one of your hosts. I'm Adam Payne, the other set, the other half the here. The other. The other guy. Guy. <laughs> We're well, Welcome back. Uh, oh, this is. Uh, it's been a week since we've talked to Logan. Actually, it's only been a few minutes for us. That's right. But it's been a week for our listeners. Time warp. And we're, um, Josh, maybe uh, could you introduce our guest and maybe give a, a synopsis of what yeah, we talked let's, about you know, here? Let's do a brief recap. Logan and I met several years ago. He had heard about Ultra Cur. And then I found out as our relationship grew that he had been through a journey with his son who had developed. A, had been diagnosed with a kidney cancer at five years old, went through the entire typical conventional protocol, radiation, chemotherapy, but that was a unique pivotal moment for, for Logan in a couple of ways. Number one, God sent an individual his way to help him understand that he was hanging on to unforgiveness yeah. and bitterness in his heart. And then number two, it set him on a path because Logan is kind of this guy that's like, Never say die, you're not going to tell me I can't do it. He immediately went down this road of what are things I can do as a father outside this hospital setting, outside this oncology group, to be able to facilitate health and healing. So that's you, kind of where we you know, take it back up here. Just to, uh, to put a, a little bit of uh, more color to this, I don't. most physicians don't understand the metabolic aspect of cancer and don't understand all, all the adjunctive things that people can do that will help them on this journey. So, uh, Logan, welcome back. Thank you. And uh, we really appreciate you joining us for this uh, and sharing your heart with us today and uh, allowing us to discuss Lander's uh, journey. I re we really appreciate it. Yes, yeah, and you know, Logan, I think you're aware that, you know, just a couple of weeks back, we had the privilege of having Joe Tippins in the studio. You know, you mentioned uh, Dr. Seafried and Dr. Warburg and I was just speaking with a lady yesterday that got our phone number from somebody, and she brought up Seafried as well. I'm curious, as you were, you know, you mentioned right in the in the kind of great cliffhanger from our last segment, you mentioned kind of definitively, you know, your belief that cancer is very much a metabolic uh, disorder, uh, or it's triggered by that way. It's it, that's a catalyst. Um, what are the philosophies of some of these people that obviously are kind of your heroes out there in terms of the book that they wrote, so to speak, or the protocols that they have available on the Internet? And you mentioned a Dr. Warburg and a Dr. Seafried. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yeah. what you were learning there? Yeah, uh, there is a fantastic book, and I am drawing a blank about Warburg during the uh, Nazi occupation, but it goes into like the story of Hitler and the story of Warburg. It's a fantastic read. Uh, oh, I'd wow. highly recommend uh getting that. But uh, Warburg basically identified that cancer uh, metabolism is different than a normal cell, right? It's based off of fermentation um, and it, it, and just a low oxygen environment. And okay. that, I mean, that, I think that's pretty standard. That's uh, been proven. <laughs> and so Seafried took it to another level and said, well, cancer doesn't only ferment glucose, right? It, it also does some amino acids, especially um, glutamine. Mm. And so by inhibiting it, uh, both fuels, we can starve the cancer, we can kill the cancer. And I, I mean, the, uh, the proof's in the pudding. He's, he's been doing it 30, 40 years, uh, working with clinics around the world, and they're, they're doing it. And so by starving it of fuel, starving the cancer of fuel, I, you're, you're getting much, much better results. And I think that's when you couple it with other bodybuilding compounds, you get that synergistic effect that just, uh, it, it's just working. A, a really interesting so, note that I came across just the other other day, because I couldn't understand why Brzezinski's method down in Houston were, were working while, while they were having success. Well, I mean, he's using a, a amino acid inhibiting drug. And I think that's why the glioblastoma mm -hmm. is uh, being treated effectively, which supports Seafried's work. Okay. So let me ask you this, though. People, um, I mean, I know people that, and Joe even talks about it. Joe, Joe Tippins basically says, I really didn't feel much different. And yet I had this killer diagnosis, you know, that basically was going to have them write me off and send me home to die. Um, didn't feel that much different. Now, when you're talking about limiting amino acids, uh, 
how does a person do that? Because I'm a person actually that in my own personal life has relied on amino acids as actual supplements for years and years and years. Every time I eat, obviously, a free-range chicken breast or I eat, um, you know, organic, uh, uh, you know, grass-fed beef or anything that I may eat in my diet that's really clean, I'm getting a ton of amino acids. So what do people well, do yeah, there? Protein, what, the protein is, is essentially amino acids. Right. It's all built up from amino, amino so, acids. So, so what is a person Absolutely. doing? So, I mean, are you supposed to starve yourself? The, the, first, the first thing is that I don't think that amino acids cause, drug, uh, cause cancer. I don't think that okay. there is a diet that limits amino acids that is going to be effective. Well, well, there, there's there's some there's some evidence to support in uh, if people are going after ferroptosis, which is a particular kind of cell program cell death, that cysteine low cysteine diets are very helpful in that matter because cysteine is the um, is responsible for the develop for the um, uh, production of glutathione in the body, and if you don't have glutathione, you're or low glutathione levels, you're reducing the uh, antioxidant capacity of cells. And fermentation actually relies very heavily on uh, the cell's ability to detoxify itself uh, from free radicals. And so if you re remove cysteine from the body, or very low levels of it, <clears throat> those cancer cells are going to be differentially getting a lot more um, reactive oxygen species inside of them, which can cause them to die. And that is a, such a complex topic, right? <laughs> like there's, there's nothing, right. the, 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 there's the two sides, there's the preventative, right? And then there's the treatment and, and they do not look exactly the same. And I think that's something don't at all. we have to really grasp. It's a lot easier to prevent, right? Than it is, is to overcome the so what's your th what what is your recommendation then on diet logan that worked for your son as far as and, and i'm sure it's evolved it has evolved too, so much uh, and and this is yeah so I really rather than us blabbering about what we think <laughs> what what do you what's your what's your I, idea i think you have got to get the the health busters out of the diet. I think that's the first thing. And, and that's really going to be our, our processed sugars. It's the processed flours. It is the seed oils. I think those three are the biggest. If you can just get those out of the diet are, are massive. I think alcohol is way up there. Uh, but but those three big ones, just, just get it out of the diet and focus on the healthy fats and how do we support the mitochondria. And uh, so, you, Adam, you brought up the, mel the uh, glutathione aspect of, uh, you know, free oxygen or ROCs. Then the, the high dose melatonin is another one that is very interested in regards to the mitochondria. And so okay. when, when we look at how, how do we heal the mitochondria, that, that, that's another one that's worth exploring. Um, as a side note on a to Seafried is he's very uh, pro Finbin also. And so it really goes in right, line with the Tippins uh, approach uh, too. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you mentioned the high dose melatonin. It's interesting because I was hearing that as I've interacted with a lot of people that have come to us that are part of Joe Tippin's contingent and following, but then yeah. they're utilizing our adjunctive therapy, our Onco product. I've heard of high dose melatonin more and more and more. And then our chief medical advisor, Dr. Brian Frank, has begun to talk about it a lot. And well, I'm hearing it, a lot more integrative practitioners talking about it too. It's it's something, uh, we've actually made it. Yeah. We've made it we for have. our German distributors. And I don't know why we're not, there's no absolutely zero reason why we don't have it in our I portfolio. I would love Josh. to see It's just that we haven't so, made it. So are you a, are you a, in your in your opinion, is there almost no downside to the use of melatonin, both for people that don't have cancer and for people that do have cancer? I, I do. I at first was very hesitant about melatonin because you hear that it's going to shut down natural melatonin production and it's all you know hormone, hormone, hormone. Well, what what we're finding mm -hmm. is that from a mitochondrial standpoint, it works like glutathione does for the cell. It is a mitochondrial detoxifier. When obviously when our mitochondria is detoxified and it's not dealing with the excess of burden of toxicity, then it functions better. Well, if the me metabolic disease 
theory of cancer is actual. Yeah, the better the mitochondria, yeah, the, the better it. that you're going to be able to prevent cancer or even overcome it. Tell me what you would consider today to be a proactive diet for an individual that doesn't have cancer, but wants to remain cancer free and never get that diagnosis. Where would you go? I think that the easiest way, honestly, is a, is a, a low oxalate paleo style cyclical keto. And I know that may sound a little complex, but the it the, does. <laughs> the uh, oxalates, oxalates and not having proper food processing uh, to where we have an abundance of like phytic acid and other anti-nutrients. Go back to what I was saying on the mitochondrial dysfunction. If we don't have our minerals, we don't have good mitochondrial function. And so if we're eating a high oxalate, high, phyt high uh, phytic acid diet, we don't have the minerals. And so when, when we need this whole food diet that does not necessarily mean you need to eat a lot of nuts and you need to eat a lot of these greens that have have those uh chelating components i would eat more meat than anybody has been promoting i think that that's part of why seafood's work is very eye-opening in that it is a ketogenic high meat diet so high oxalate foods start with spinach rhubarb beetroot chocolate. So those are ones that you focus on or, or, or you, you stay, stay away, away from, from those. And I think spinach as a health okay. food is one of the absurdities of our time up there with saturated fat and cholesterol. The other one that is up there, way up there is going to be almonds because it's in everything. So everything that's quote unquote healthy now contains almonds. Right. So we are overloading ourselves with this phytic acid. The sprouting Soy, soybeans, yeah. grapes, yeah. potatoes. So a lot of most beans are, uh, are high oxalates. Yep. Sprouting and fermenting help with the phytic acid. The oxalates is just something that your kidney is going to have to deal with and, and, and be excreted. Okay, well, we're coming right up on another break here. So we've got another segment with Logan Duvall. If you'd like to reach out to Logan, you can go to his Facebook page for Me and McGee Market. It's a really cool little destination there in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, you can reach out to Logan Duvall there on Facebook. And then uh, the book is definitely worth a read. It's an emotional journey for sure. The first time I read it, it... Uh, kind of took me up and down and seeing life through my friend's eyes. Logan was uh, was kind of tough, but then it was also uh, really victorious because there's this common running thread through the book. So the name of the book, again, is Father's Heart. It's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. I'm sure you can find it online anywhere. And uh, we'll be right back after this break. It's Ultra Life Today. See you soon. Our mission is to take nature's most beloved botanicals and enhance them with our liquid protein scaffold technology. This helps it reach your cells faster and better. With exponentially enhanced bioavailability, you'll feel better every day. Ultra Botanica, the feel-good curcumin. Hey, welcome back to Ultra Life Today. I am Josh Bell. You? I'm Adam Payne, and we're wrapping up what has been an amazing journey with, uh, with our with our pal Logan here, and talking about his son Lander and his journey through chemis chemistry through cancer. And uh, like we did talk about a chemistry course, well, yeah, like right? like a chemistry course. Yeah, my brain is having problems this afternoon putting together thoughts. So, uh, so we've cliffhangered people. We Logan. have. We we've like. We've taken these really awesome detours, educational detours along the way, and yet we left this almost two segments ago with your son had just been through radiation, he'd been through chemo, you were doing things at home related to magnesium baths and infrared light and grounding, you know, keeping your bare feet on the on the earth, that kind of thing, wow. and changing the diet, getting rid of processed We didn't even foods. talk about that. He mentioned grounding. I just happen to be one of those insiders that knows what that means. Okay. Well, I just thought... I always know, love it when I, Adam doesn't know something. I thought grounding like, just meant... Score! I just... <laughs> I thought grounding was just, you know, feeling good and grounded inside, but really putting your, getting your feet on the real Take, earth. Taking them socks and shoes off oh, and wow. getting out there. I, I like that. I, li I, anyway. I want to know more about that. Yeah. And it's supposed to be just astonishingly good for you. 
Well, it has to do with biomagnetic yeah, fields yeah. and okay, all that so stuff. Logan, tell us, tell us how Lander got well. Tell us how he's doing today and tell us where you're at in your journey. And then maybe we'll have a few minutes to just touch, touch, touch a little bit on how we met in Ultra Cur and your experience yeah, with that. Absolutely. Uh, so. Well, Lander's a third grade little, little ornery boy. And so he's the oldest of four <laughs> and he gets to be a big brother and, you know, be his little bossy nice. self and, and just have a, have a good old time. So <laughs> the, uh, the, the big thing is guys, it, I know I've been super positive, but it, it has been, it has been very, very difficult. Um, and I, I definitely struggle, uh, daily over processing what we've been through and the constant worry about my baby and the, the what ifs. Wow. Uh, so I don't, I don't mean to take away from anybody that's listening to this that thinks that it's all sunshine and rainbows. It's, it's been a very, very difficult journey and I'm still, I'm still trying to go through that. But, uh, the constant research, the constant looking for solutions, um, I guess it's it's my coping mechanism and the desire to help serve other people. I, I think that that's what what makes it all worth it. Well, and and it's interesting too. So for a second, when you wrote the book Father's Heart, you kind of took an interesting approach. You did share your story, but then you also were sharing your own personal journey of personal growth. Um, what you were learning about cancer, you know, that it isn't a capital C, that it can be a lowercase c, and that there's effective ways to deal with that. I know you were super fortunate. I, I feel like you, you've you never been able to not say, you, you've, you've constantly said great things about the medical care. And I think that's really cool. It's like you didn't know what to do outside of conventional medical care, but obviously God kind of set you up with a really cool team of people there as well. Very fortunate about the, at least the hospital were there. I, the, we don't we don't agree on a whole 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 lot of things. Like uh, they don't think right. that matters. <laughs> right. They they don't think a lot of the things that right. we do they have any effect. Uh, I know that that is inaccurate. Uh, but they also didn't make me feel stupid or uh, demean me in any way. But uh, there, there's definitely frustration sometimes where, you know, I'm seeing right. one of the other babies that didn't make it eating ice cream and Cheetos and drinking a Coke, whereas they look at me and they say, well, diet doesn't matter and you can see Lander thrive. Well, it, I mean, it's kind of wow. right. It should be right in it front was. of them that diet, it affects outcomes so dramatically. Yeah, yeah you, you, you would certainly think so. So um, we met a while back. And I am trying to recall now, did you actually meet our friend Mike and did he lead you to us or is, was that, how's that, is that how that I, happened? Yes, absolutely. Mike, Mike has been okay. a wealth okay. of knowledge and pointing me in different directions. Um, We're talking about Mike Flanagan yep. here. We are. We're talking yeah. about our dear friend that used to office here and, yep. and, and quietly fact, work with in, individuals. In this room, yep. right. in this very room. Quietly work with individuals that had this massive health challenge that they think has a capital C. That's where I first learned that expression. Mike looked at me one day and he goes, it doesn't have to be a capital C. And, nope. and the way he said it was so matter of fact, it just was disarming. And at the same time, it was like comforting, <laughs> you know, to hear that. It's like, wow, okay. I, I miss Mike. Yeah, me too, yeah. me too. We talk though. We talk. I don't. So anyway, um, he he had been using our UltraCur in all of the individuals that he'd been with. Of course, now we've got some really interesting things in the space as adjunctive therapies for cancer. But um, you became an UltraCur fan initially. For for our people that don't know what that is, it's we took a a technology that's a patented technology that Adam Payne and some of his colleagues at an Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation put together. They were able to create a liquid matrix of molecular curcumin, and then they discovered that it had an affinity for protein structures and amino acids that would take this very non-absorbable plant compound and make it ultra bioavailable where molecular curcumin would fly into the bloodstream at exponential levels and stay there for many hours according right. to our German yeah, we, research friends. Yep, so, steady state and after what, a couple of weeks. What, what, what got you interested there initially? I know you've got supplements behind you there. Uh, obviously me and McGee Market, oh my goodness, you've got UltraCur there. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, it's right there, now. right over your shoulder. That's why you said that. Of course I see it. How <laughs> could just, I, how could 
could I miss our I'm branded just, products I'm there? Pay, I'm just paying Josh. attention to Logan. You know, <laughs> I'm paying attention to our so, guest. <laughs> so how did you how did you discover UltraCur, Logan, and, what, and what's been your experience with so that? It was it was absolutely Mike, um, and then. So as I understood curcumin and what it was doing to the body, and I'm, I do believe y'all have the greatest product that, that's out there. Um, it, it has been, I mean, in studies show that it can kill cancer stem cells. So curcumin can kill cancer stem cells. The studies are out there. It is very evident. And so from a perspective of how do you get the most of that available is what I was trying to do. And the other thing, I think... Me, Cancer as a metabolic disease, one of the things that, that we need to optimize metabolism is lower our inflammation. So that was the two things that wanted uh, I wanted to make sure that we had it in there. And what I did with like this little building is called Lander's Corner. So kind of that boxing connotation of, of a team behind the nice. fighter. Um, it it right. is it's simply the things that we use and believe in, I wanted to make it available because we're a farmer's market. We're not really a health food store, a farmer's market and make right. it available to the people that come out here. But I have seen the products work magic when it comes to uh, pain and, and just general well-being. Well, you hit on something that I'd like you to share with our with our listeners and viewers, and that is there's probably what you would kind of consider your top five, top 10, as it relates to supplement. We've talked a little bit about diet, eliminating processed foods, eliminating sugars, eliminating flours, eliminating uh, oxalates, um, phytic acid, foods that, you know, that are, that are high phytic acid or oxalates. And now you, we, you talked about UltraCur and curcumin, if you can get it in the body, being an amazing thing. What are some of the other staple supplements that you feel like are core in an individual's journey, either to prevent cancer or to help facilitate getting well from cancer? That's a great question. You're John. throwing softballs. Yeah, I can tell he's got, he's, got an, he's got an answer. <laughs> I know, but I know you've got an answer for it. me. Abs okay. Absolutely. The number one thing without question in my mind is cellular hydration. Okay, and so that is going to be our water, high quality water without all the toxins and the appropriate sodium and cofactors to get it inside of our cells. That's that's the foundation. Um, OK, now we don't mind mentioning brands here. And you said a, you said a huge mouthful related to water, because whenever I think about water, I just see people thinking any water is just OK to drink. Uh, and so tell me your definition of good water that's actually going to do what you were talking about. And if you have brands, feel free to say them. We don't mind that um, here. Unfortunately, it's super, super deep. And I'm going to do my best to just do it briefly. So when, we, okay. when we're okay. looking at... We've got about five okay. minutes. When we're, we're looking at water, we want to also consider jo Dr. Gerald Pollack's work with the fourth phase of water. And so that's going to be exclusion zone or easy water. So that, that fourth phase. And what that is, is it's going to be the type of water that uh, acts different in the body. Okay, so that's very, very deep. If you can find a structured water creation. Ah, he said the word. I knew he was going to say that. Yep. Uh, like like Ophora is going to be bing, bing, my bing. Uh, brand that I would, I would recommend. It's very, very expensive. That, that is kind of the, the problem with that. And say, and say that one again. Ophora. I'm curious. Ophora. It's Ophora. a water okay. system. They, they're, the system's incredible. Okay. It's very expensive, though. Um, another way okay. that we're finding okay. that you can actually structure water is analema. It's a little glass wand. It looks crazy. I thought there's no way that this will work. Uh, you can take the same water, use this analema wand in one and, and not in the other, and it tastes different. And that's because it goes back from an incoherent state into a structured state. We, we need that. We need this spring water is where you would find it in nature. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you've mm -hmm. got to have is you, you have to have sodium. I mean, we have it, an abundance of sodium causes problems, right? And I'm talking about from the cellular level. We want, we want to balance in and out of the, of the cell. But you've also got the next layer of that high quality water is you've got to have your minerals, sodium being one of them. But there's also magnesium, there's copper, selenium, zinc, I iron. I think we actually have an iron abundance problem, but that's another side story. Do you, do you have a particular um, mineral blend that you like or trace mineral drops or anything that you like that you feel like is really 
simple and also a great quality. What I personally what you, use what is going to be a Dr. Berg's uh, is is the scoop electrolytes, and we do use just a little bit of that. I think Celtic sea salt is one of the best ones. Oh, just, I love that. Just to stuff. put on the tongue yep. right before you drink water, because too much water can be a problem. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say about the cellular hydration. That doesn't mean just go go down a whole whole bunch of water. You got to do it. Right. Don't go drown right. yourself. Yeah. Don't go drown yeah, yourself. I'm with you. But the so for people that don't understand what structured water is, maybe just a quick detour, what is structured water? So uh, Dr. Gerald Pollock's work, it, it's, it's an entire book on what that is because it's very difficult to say. But it moves, uh, you, you know, you've heard water has memories or water has these different structures in which mm -hmm. the hydrogen and, and uh, oxygen molecules are moving around. Well, they're either structured right or they're incoherent. And they actually move in a way that is uh, really cool. And this is how you know God exists, is when you can see how the, the just Google structured water and the movement, they will form what's called this exclusion zone to where the water outside and inside of a certain container moves in, in by itself when it's structured. It's just like a wow. symphony, it isn't is. it? It's like it's just like it's just everything is just it is. working perfectly together. That's, I'm, I'm that's gonna, amazing. I really, I'm gonna have to, uh, Logan. You've inspired me to, to do some more personal research on structured water, and to see for myself what what's in what's in this stuff. Because we've had some people that sell it and make it, and um, I've never put much credence into it. But you're inspiring me to look at it. Well, again. I'll be honest. I don't trust very many people, and to. It, they got to kind of prove it to me before before I'm going to tout it. Uh, but I, I am very comfortable with the Ophora and Analema. I have no financial interest with them whatsoever, but I do sure. do use those products. Um, we, we we appreciate that. So um, we've got one minute left here. I want to make sure that that uh, our viewers and listeners know how to get in touch with you. Uh, me and McGee Market on Facebook, and if you just type in me and McGee and get another M in there, it's going to pop up this North Little Rock uh, destination farm stand that also has uh, Lander's Corner and some different supplements there. Me and McGee Market on Facebook. Also the book Father's Heart by Logan Duval, D-U-V-A-L-L. -L. You can find it on Barnes & Noble, on Amazon. Uh, just look it up on the net. It's a great story. It'd be a great book for you to get and give to someone that's walking down this journey because the cool thing about Logan's story is he didn't know alternative health at the time. He learned it along the way, so he went down this conventional road with what he knew along with what God was showing him. And uh, I just can't thank you enough, Logan, for hanging out with us again. It went by way too fast. Yeah, um, it just and and then we started talking about structured water. And I want to like keep running the tape. I'm sorry. No, I want to keep running the tape and go down that rabbit hole. It's a good one. Logan, we will definitely have you back on Ultra Life today. We're so grateful. Um, you said something to us on the break, um, but I'm going to let you say it out of your own mouth. You said, I want people to be left with something. Tell, tell us what that was. Just hope. There's, there's so much that we can do. And I think if we focus on what we can control and just do the best we can at that, it, it's all going to work out. Excellent. We so appreciate it. You have been listening to Logan Duvall, author of Father's Heart. I'm Josh Bell. You're one of your hosts on Ultra Life Today. And I'm the second host, the, the lesser important one, but here nonetheless, Adam Payne. Uh, I love your false humility, brother. <laughs> okay, Logan, we'll talk to you soon. Ultra Life Today, we will talk to you next week.